so first let's talk about little bit about cloud okay and yeah before before i start with uh, this cloud thing uh, uh, let me tell one more thing like i have a around six year experience in the training as well so like normally i teach people python dsa and lld concepts uh, like python dsa lld so these are three uh, three things i normally teach and i have been associated with learn bay and uh, expertify these are some institutes where i have uh, and z computers just to, I just mention all those things to just uh, give you little assurance like you are in the safe and so like you need not to worry about uh, Python Terraform uh, real product point of view understanding and the real uh, real project and uh, point of view understanding. Okay, so let's let's talk about cloud little bit. So it will be very basic thing. Might be few people think it will be repeat, but it will be good to have. See before cloud. So normally what is cloud? First of all, we need to understand cloud is nothing just to use someone else's infrastructure. So the way we come to Hyderabad or Bangalore as a fresher or as a student, when we do not have the property. So what we do in place of buying the new property, which cost more than a crore or some very big amount of money, we just simply rent it out, rent out. So we take it out the rent, we stay there and we pay the rent as per the need to the our uh, landlord. And once we vacate, uh, vacate, we, we we are free. Like we need not to pay anything. Okay. So similarly is the cloud. So before cloud, take an example. A comp organization is there, which is developing some e-commerce site. So what they have to do? They have to take a very big hardware. Okay. So this hardware uh, might be a multi uh, multi capability hardware, or it might be a single capability hardware. So to maintain this hardware, an organization need to have the power, ACs for the cooling, like, okay. Then we need to have some kind of uh, real estate property. I mean to say the space where we, where we are going to put this server. Plus we need to have some admin papers. And on the top of that, the most, most crucial thing is the security. I hope you guys are able to hear me, correct? So, uh, security, I was talking about security. So, by the way, some hacker try to, uh, try to attack on this server and your website. So, all those things need to manage by the company. Right? Company, I mean to say the organization. So, the overall cost to this is very big. When you are a mid-level company or a startup or a company which want to have a 24 into 7 uh, availability of uh, their application. Okay. So because buying a server, getting a place on rent, AC and everything will cost a lot of money. Okay. So to overcome this, few providers come with this, uh, like a solution called cloud. So what cloud do? So take an example, I'll talk about the Azure cloud for now, or may it be AWS, any cloud can be. So what they will have, they have a very, very big premise, very big premise, like it might be like some two, three uh, acres of land and they have very big, big data center inside it. Okay. So, so we consider it's a data center of some cloud. Okay. In data center, what they will do, they will provide you some uh, some uh, some uh, you can say category of the resources like you want virtual machine or you uh, you want some kind of the space storage okay or you want something to install in this data center based on your template so like for Azure we call it ARM template and for AWS we call it cloud formation template okay so all these things uh, this cloud provider will give okay and on the uh, for these services he will charge. Okay, based on the based on the you can say the compute and the storage, it will charge. Okay, so here first of all the power, AC, real estate, admin security, everything will be taken care of by Azure. 
how we'll see how how those things work like when i said security how azure provide the security uh, and all those things okay but on the nutshell you understand everything is rented out by azure to this organization okay and they have to pay only the rent okay now take example this company think to uh, not use that particular vm or particular server it can just simply convey it to the Azure so you, in the portal directly by deleting or by shutting it down. Uh, then the billing of that resource will not happen. So if take example, there was server two, server three, uh, server four. Okay, so this server one, uh, if you don't only want one, we can keep it on and remaining we can keep it off. So by this, we are not paying even rent. And we need to understand one thing, the procurement cost is zero here. We need not to buy like thousands of dollars for this server. Okay, till now I have only talked about the cost point of view and some maintenance, okay, the networking between S1 and S2, S3, sorry, S3, and I'll put S2 as well. So like uh, this networking between S1 and S2 is taken care by Azure and any kind of router required or optical cables required, everything will be taken care of by Azure. So we need not to worry. In the lab, normally what happened, because some engineer went inside and because of some mistake or accident, one or two LAN cable coming out of its port is very normal thing, okay? So those kind of issues will not be there. Now, one more point I want to talk about here, scalability, scale. So now, take example, it's a website of Flipkart. Now Flipkart is going with a billion, the big billion sale. So whatever the number of servers were there, S1, S2, S3, all these things were enough for normal days. But for big billion days, he required double the capacity of his existing capacity. So I mean to say here again, we need to have three servers. Okay. So now for having this server only for two days or three days require lots of costing because they need to be bought by the company Flipkart then they have to be uh, configured properly. The power supply need to be taken care. Might be the room which in which the data center which Flipkart is having, not having that much space. So all those things again becomes an issue. Okay. So this kind of issues also can be taken care by uh, Azure or any cloud very easily. Like we don't, uh, they have an infinite, you can say, resource as per end user point of view or as a organization point of view. So they can just simply uh, give you more servers. S, 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 A, B, C. So these are some temporary servers. And once this work of these servers are done, you can just free those servers. So again, you understand the scalability is very easy. You can on the fly, you can uh, increase your, uh, you can say your compute resource. So that's how the cloud comes into the picture. That is the beauty of the cloud. And even the security provided by cloud is of very high quality. Okay, so those are the very basic nutshell reason we are using the cloud. And now I give an example of Flipkart. Okay, so we might have one doubt. Okay, how Flipkart hand can have the problem of real estate? How they can have the uh, quality of the security or anything? But see, Flipkart has covered the journey of 20 years. So uh, now might be for Flipkart, it's okay to have their in-house servers and everything, which which is again risky because uh, maintaining the data center across the globe for multiple uh, location is very difficult if you are not into the same business. Okay, but understanding the journey of the Flipkart and uh, thinking when the Flipkart was not such a big company and putting that much money on this. Uh, so servers and the infrastructure is very costly for the, for that reason cloud 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 comes into the picture so now in cloud like if we talk about azure there are other things like uh, what we call like vnet is there like how networking work blob storage vm arm templates all those things are there which we are going to talk later uh, how these things work and uh, uh, what is actually a ARM template, what is actually a VNet, how the ACL has been configured, everything will be covered uh, on a good scale. So, but on, on a nutshell, this is the club, okay? So, please do let me know if whatever the things, uh, whatever the things I spoke about is clear to the people.
please give me yes or no like whether you it, whatever i spoke makes sense or not okay but what about other people was i able to explain myself properly like whatever i was trying to say cool cool so now we will talk little bit about infrastructure as a code what is actually that concept means and how that works Still, my screen is visible, I guess. Yeah, cool. So now, infrastructure as a code. So, but actually, infrastructure as a code. Now, I just give you an example of Flipkart. So, let's forget about cloud now. Uh, just uh, consider we have some website okay take example this is one server on this server on this server we have done a multiple or first consider this is one lab or some data set okay in this lab i have provision few servers few db some load balancer and some routing devices and here i have some storage okay now i have done some configuration this is the you can say it is very small scale uh, provisioning i have done okay so till now i have done provisioning provisioning of infra now on this the top of the servers all the server load balancer s1 s2 and the database and storage uh, actually don't get confused with db this is like some you can say uh, SQL base and this is something like a, uh, you can say document base or a block storage kind of thing. Okay. Now on the top of this we have done some configuration and this configuration is very huge like the way we issue the Linux command or we have multiple uh, thousands of CLI or thousands of REST APIs you can see here thousands of REST APIs or thousands of CLIs. This, this is the, this. After doing all those things, we achieve this configuration. Okay. After doing all those things, similarly in provisioning, after investing, like you consider, long time, might be four hours or five hours manually. Like we, we were able to configure this server. Okay. We will able to create that many server and everything. Now, suddenly, some kind of disaster happens. Some check-in happen might be this disaster can be natural disaster or man-made or even like a technical disaster like some bad code goes inside and the application crash everything crash nothing left on the nothing left in the data center now now okay in the real environment there will be some replication there will be some kind of the replication you can say or backup or you can say backup server backup data center okay but take example the load move here everything whatever the requests here again some load balancer is there okay so whatever the load coming from the client side coming uh, previously coming this side now this is completely down so all requests are coming here so it depends like on the type of the net and everything whether there will be a session disruption or not but consider it like for some time that e-commerce site like for a second or so that e-commerce site was down now everything moved to here now and the client is happy because for him everything's still working fine but the admin will be not happy 
because admin know if something happened to this setup also within one day or like in uh, whatever the time so then then things will be big problem for the organization so what he need to do he need to bring up this setup again now infrastructure as a code comes into the picture now tell me doing all those things manually from the scratch whether it will be a efficient way or not it will be not because i am not reading your chat but uh, consider it, it will be not a efficient way why because again you have to execute every command first of all it's time consuming second thing it's error pro there is a possibility like uh, error happen while executing the command and the third thing which is what most common thing happen in the organization but is that like a new admin is there or a admin is there who is not from very long time in the organization who don't know each and every troubleshooting things who is having limited knowledge for this kind of cases we require something like a automation script when we talk about uh, python or anything At, and whatever the tool support this automation we call them the infrastructure automation tool so infrastructure as a core tool so what i'm trying to say whatever this recovery is the need to be done that will be done using the infrastructure as a core tool few famous i will talk about nc1 and terraform yeah there are other salt stack on which i have worked and civil source stack and there are some puppet and other things which on which i have not worked but ansible and source stack i have i'm aware of and this terraform so now we have to understand like we talk about couple of things here one is like uh, provisioning and one we talk about the configuration those are the two main things which uh, need to be done uh, on which is more time consuming so here we need to understand ansible is configuration infrastructure as a tool so what its work start after the provisioning so what i am trying to say here take example you have some data center might be in on premise or might be in cloud so first of all you need to have your server configured when i say server configured i mean to say uh, like the basic operating system is working on that server what i mean to say if you want to have some kind of uh, a tomcat server or apache server those servers are powered up on those tomcat server software is working properly or apache server software working properly on the top of that you need to have your application based app configuration need to be done so when we talk about application based configuration then the ansible comes so under ansible like when i was in a startup called array network so there are few of the japanese clients they ask about this ansible playbook so like uh, ansible having some concept called playbooks so you write some playbooks so whenever there used to be some disaster happen in the like we were using we were supporting reverse proxy product it's a kind of load balancer so uh, plus security appliance uh, so whenever something used to happen in their network they used to use our ansible code uh, to bring their setup again okay so that's how they used to save a lot of time okay so that is that is configuration uh, based infrastructure tool or you can say configuration as a in code inside infrastructure as well, okay now second thing is terraform what is terraform terraform is more of the provisioning uh, Tool. When I say provisioning tool, I mean to say uh, we can we created here multiple servers. Okay, we created servers, we created databases, uh, we created some load balancer. All those things can be configured, or you can say bring up or provisioned by Terraform. So that's how the Terraform and Ansible are different. Terraform more into provisioning of the uh, you can say infrastructure, and Ansible is more onto the configuring the application. Be uh, application required configuration on those provisional infrastructure. Okay, so now, now we uh, now uh, I was okay. Now I was talking about something called. Take example. This is AWS. This is Azure. So in Azure, I was talking about ARM, and in AWS, I was talking about CloudFormation template. 
okay so those are the same things those are the same things to do the provisioning on the azure and aws respectively A arm will do the provisioning of the resources on azure okay and uh, cloud formation template will do the provisioning of uh, resources or you can say the uh, infrastructure in more layman language onto the aws cloud now uh, these templates normally be given to the end customer or you can say are present under the template uh, for template for, you can say path of azure or aws so th there are some there is a, some there is one specific place where you can found this template and you can find them and you can uh, run them or do some changes on this template and execute now the question arise when azure and aws having such a such kind of feature like where they are only supporting the template why terraform is required? Why Terraform is required here? Because Terraform is more generic. Terraform can work on anything. Terraform can work on AWS, it can work on Azure, it can work on uh, GCP, it can work on on-premise or VMware or Citrix Cloud, any cloud. Any cloud it work, uh, it can work. And almost, you can say, the changes are quite less that we will talk about later. So that, that is the beauty of the Terraform. Terraform is, and plus it is now, more you can say more more organized but i mean to say in azure arm template you cannot have multiple files you cannot have multiple modules you cannot have a separate data file what i'm trying to say here take example this is one infrastructure as a code script okay you can have multiple code isaac scripts plus you can have some data field data file but i mean to say uh, you want to give some different name every time or some different vnet you need to assign all those things you can take care in terraform very nicely as compared to ARM. so this is on the nutshell what is the infrastructure as a code and why it is required why it is better than azure arm and uh, cloud formation yeah in in terraform like we we have something called like three stages like init is there plan is there and uh, apply is there so one more good point in the uh, like uh, terraform template is or you can say uh, problem with the azure template so what example take example in azure template or aws template you have configured three servers s1 s2 s3 now you want to configure s4 so you need to have a different file altogether you cannot add a <coughs> server for definition in the same file and try to run because it will throw the error all those things are already present but in terraform that will not happen so it is more of the append base uh, uh, configuration uh, tool uh, or you can say provisioning tool why it will while uh, while in it uh, it will okay we'll go to the init later so what i was trying to say here uh, in terraform uh, it will check okay what is the current state of the infrastructure so what it will check whether s1 s2 s3 are present inside our uh, you can say our cloud or not and then it will try to compare it with its local file and then it will decide okay what need to configure and what need not to configure so in that case it will only add server 4 into the infrastructure but will not give any error okay so that is the beauty of the terraform so I was talking about Terraform in it. So see, I was talking about Terraform can give support, give support on AWS and Azure. So, so take example, this is one Terraform file. So in this first Terraform file, first we will have resource provider plugins or identity so we will give some block here which will tell okay whether this server one definition server two definition whether this will be going to work on aws or that is going to work on azure that will be defined by this block okay so the, uh, yeah this is uh happen in the init state but i am trying to say when you will give the terraform in it it will check whatever the .ta file present in the directory and based on that file it will install all the plugins all the apis okay and 
uh, like uh, uh, all the all the you can say the setup part of things like which is required to run this uh, template will be done in the init part okay so all apis all plugin it will launch uh, based on the provider okay in the terraform plan in the terraform plan what happened i was just talking about that thing take example in the terraform plan our terraform code will try to compare terraform state file with the desired configuration now okay so we have something called tf state file state file just state file will call it for now and we have uh, you can say desired config okay so what it will try to do in that part plan part it will try to compare both the things and decide okay what it need to do take example in the terraform state file s1 s2 is already there in desired state s1 s2 s3 is there so it will only add this s3 and it will give this message when you will run this uh, terraform plan and now the take the second case here you want to do s1 s3 and s4 so now what it will do now the terraform state file is at these three things so now what it will try to do it will delete this and it will add this okay so that that's what happened in the terraform plan it will plan what it need to be done and terraform applies the last step where it will execute all those things and see okay things are working fine or not and give error if it is having some issue so that is on the very high level i talk about uh, um, infrastructure as a code and the terraform please please consider to you okay uh igor uh, for okay i guess for something else no is there so please let do let me know if the infrastructure as a code some basic understanding i am able to make or not okay cool cool yeah just one request like uh, to other people who has not responded please try to give yes or no so i will able to understand okay everyone is on the same page uh, today it might not be so helpful but if we go forward um, more into the details of this topic then it will be very helpful to because we need not to lose anyone in the path um, so yeah so that is one request and okay cool so that is infrastructure code okay so uh, i want to understand like uh, uh, might be please ev everyone do reply may i know in what background people are working so might be you can give the way i am giving so example proof as that sre python so something like that uh, whatever the work you are doing or whatever the domain you are doing uh, can you give in this template to me and if someone is student name hyphen student Okay. okay cool so i understand most of the mixed people are there but uh, i feel like uh, 
No, I cannot see. Okay. So, Theo in cybersecurity, what do you do? So, I do things from like cloud security to uh, cloud assessment or cloud security assessment. Yep. Okay, cloud security assessment. Yep. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. So let's move to our uh, one more part. And that will be on the Python. So I'm considering people understand what is automation. Please do let me yes or no if someone don't know automation, then we can talk about it for a minute. So most of the people understand what is automation. It's just simply automating, or you can say, uh, doing something by which all the manual steps or all the human effort to do some kind of configuration or some some kind of uh, configuration will take it uh, will be done by using some code. Okay, so that is automation. So now now let's talk about Python. So like we can consider like I'll tell you the story about my experience in the start. OK, so when I started my career in 2011. OK, so I used to like after five months of my starting career, I used to work on some kind of uh, keyword base. Coding. OK, that is for up to one year max one no two year i guess somewhere two year. then later on i moved to Perl for a few years a uh, few years and after 2006 15 i guess yeah 15 i have never seen any other id except pycharm yeah like little bit i saw J java and go as well but majority of my time like 95 percent of time i have seen these ids so python has captured the market from not eight years i guess beyond before that also like from 2010 11 12 time onwards they have captured the market so why why python is so important because in python few of the challenges which other languages were there for you can say for the normal code base but i mean to say normal like we have some specific section like when we need a high intensive data like application then might be coding can be done in some other language and if we have some kind of asynchronous use cases then we might use some other coding okay so we'll go on, on those details later but why python is important in like qa or sre role another thing and even some part of uh, uh, even in microservices python is very famous yeah in website python is little bit lagging so but what is the reason for uh, like all languages like uh, or you can say not not all like custom languages like Perl, java they lose their scope here in this two part because see, first of all python is easy second thing readability and most important is support support i mean to say python is having very big community so now if you compare it with c or c plus plus or even with java if you need to open a tcp connection like uh, i am giving this tcp example because i am coming from that working domain so if you need to open a tcp socket and everything or you need to make a ssh connection or ssl based handshake you, you need to do a lot of work in the you can say java and other things okay and in Python, that work will be done by some like the third party module. Okay. So, like in Python, we have something called uh, Paramico. 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 Using this, you can have a SSL connection in Go very, very easily. So, this is one thing. 
readability like Python support, the syntax of Python is very simple. It does not have like at the rate, dollars, and other like things which were there in Perl. Okay, it is not having braces in the issues like Java where you need to keep on checking here and there by moving the cursor up and down. Okay, which bracket is closed where and other things because Python support indentation. So when you define any function, it will automatically go inside that way. So you understand, okay, this is under this. Okay, so readability is better. And because it is having too much support from the external world and the readability is there and plus you can say there is no fancy declaration uh, inside the uh, you can say while defining a variable there is no fancy stuff or tedious stuff so it's easy as well okay so that are the these are the main reason like python become quite famous and like i have almost uh, eight years of experience in python now and uh, done some like you can say frameworks and website development from the scratch so for framework i have used pytest and robo and for the website i have used flask framework so that is all about python basic but let's let's try to talk about some basic data type so who the people who don't know uh, about python they will they will come to know python data type okay why python is important i i'll just give some some, some more things like there is concept called list comprehension which is faster as compared to loops. We have something called generators. We call them yield, okay, yield, using yield. So these things, like these things are better for the performance, okay? So that is one more thing, like few Pythonic things are there, like list comprehension, generator, those are Pythonic related concept, okay? When we compare it with the Perl, Ruby, and other scripting languages, those are not there. So because of that, the performance of Python is little bit uh, improved. And even the oops in the python is far better than the perl and uh, except java like oops is better than perl or there used to be one language called tcl okay so what are the data types okay first of all we have a you can say integer okay so integer like as everyone knows like or might be few don't know like you integers are any number okay uh, from minus infinity to infinity okay so like you can define integer like this in the python a is equal to 10 a is equal to minus 2 okay and now i will open my uh, you can say python prompt just to tell you and to show you how python is very easy Can you see my command prompt as well? Okay, so no, please do let me know. Theo, I'll answer your question in a minute. Can you see now? Okay, cool. So now, uh, Theo, I'll get back to your question. Give me. Okay, so now, take an example as previously I mentioned, you have given a is equal to 10. Okay, so now it's an integer. Now, what kind of things I can do on this variable? How I can find it Python? Just simply help, not help. Dir. Okay. So now you see, these are the operations you could, which you can do on this, like add are there, bool and other things. Lots of things are there. Here, few things you need to find out. Few things you cannot right now. So that is the beauty. And plus, if you want to know about uh, something. Uh, like DIR is one utility and you want to know something about this uh, conjugate. So how you can help a dot conjugate Okay, so now it will help. 
and prune building function conjugate method of inbuilt return self the complex conjugate of any two integer so that's how uh, you will you will able to learn python things while doing because see knowing everything is very difficult and remembering everything is very difficult so those kind of features are not there in Perl, TCL or any other programming languages like which were a little bit older but the new languages are having some feature kind of this kind of this but this is very cool feature because when you work sometimes even while in the interview when I forget okay how to how to take example uh, one string is there there I have given a name visual path okay. so now we are here is one thing called split function is there with this split function okay so now here sometime I forget how to use this let's split so now see it will talk about everything here is the example split separator by default none max split this is the value everything is given then it is a delimiter on all those things so you can you can learn anything while doing the python your own or you can recollect anything using this code okay so i was talking about this is this is integer where you can do all this mathematical operation plus minus multiplication and other stuff then you have a strings which is the collection of the alphabets so a is equal to something like visual so here again as i showed uh, here is the example what kind of what kind of operation it can do replace ls strip lowercase join and split r adjust all those things you can do so those are the functions so normally uh, integers and strings are very very basic so we'll not go into much detail about them right now but for integer you understand like why integer and uh, strings are required then we have something called tuple first i will talk about which are specific to python so so it will be like which is not present in Perl and other most of the common languages. So like we can have some some base. So take example you have created one tuple A B C D. So it is as good as list, the normal list which we are going to talk about next. But one one thing is with the tuple is that it is immutable. So once you have defined or you created the tuple, uh, you cannot change it. You can iterate it. You can fetch the values you can delete it, but you cannot modify the tuple so normally the use case of this are in in web security or you can say the in in anywhere like it normally used to keep the secrets what i mean to say like some ssh keys or some password base or some 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 output from the database uh, inside a program which you don't want developer to modify it just he can you or she can use it so in that kind of cases we use tuple okay the list as name suggests it is very simple it is a b c d like a a collection of uh, heterogeneous data type so it can have the string alphabets everything mixed together and and it normally support all the function like iteration fetching it anywhere you can modify it you can you can find the length of the list and you can iterate it from the back anything you can do so i'll just try to show you again so take example this is tuple first i'll show the list so uh, you will have so empty i am declaring right now so if you do dir you'll see like multiple functions are there clear copy count extend index insert op remove everything we can do so but if i do tuple You will have very limited see you can count and index that's it you cannot you you see you do not have extend you do not have uh, pop remove insert those things and even reverse those functions are not present here why because uh, tuple is uh, immutable okay so these are tuples list and then we have a dictionary dictionary is normally we hash key hash kind of thing so where we have a key and a value which is normally taken care like for some performance monitoring thing uh, like where you need to have it some keyword base uh, you can say um, data 
take example execution one execution two execution three execution four and you want to maintain the time of all these four execution in that case you can have execution one as your key execution two as a key execution three as a key and value can be in the seconds minute or whatever the criteria you want so this is one example plus you want to have some kind of detail of the employees where you want to give a nested dictionary where you create a name of the employee then later on you want to have nested dictionary is there second nested dictionary is there where you have given the name of the employer take it up or proof and then you can have another nested dictionary where you can have email where you can have phone number salary last hike and all those manager all those information can be there so th for that purposes we have dictionary okay so in dictionary also if you again okay, we have something called lots of methods are there items and keys you can you can like uh, find it this way so here is like copying the items like it will give you the keys and value both keys will give you only keys value will only give values and pop is there to delete anything set default we'll talk about it later okay so so those things are there and similarly if you want to give one more data type is there sets sets is something which will help you to remove uh, not remove to have the unique entries plus when you want to compare two data segments like you want to see intersection and all those things so i mean to say here you create a set okay no 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 i forgot how used to declare set one second it is to one one second okay curly brace so you can have set something like this now if you see i will enter one this duplicate value but when you will print it it will print only four ones so this is this is the set beauty of the set and what kind of function it give? i was talking about intersection here it is intersection disjoint subset all those things pop remove like as simple list method so this is mostly used when you have a two different sets of data which you want to compare okay so in that case you can use it so that is on the very high level uh, you can say the data type in python and hope like it was useful but but what what exactly uh, how you learn all those things because no one is going to ask in your interview or no one is going to talk about you are not going to get a uh, get a problem in your live project where you just simply need to declare a list you need to create the list on the runtime or need to create from a json which is some separate data file then do some operations okay so which we will talk later we'll talk about the problems and so some basic use cases which normally we need to use okay so those things will like based on both in like in the project or both in the interviews like both in project and interview what kind of problems you require okay so that is overall about some some idea how i normally teach uh, okay, for the time crunch, I did not talk about the data type much in detail, but that's how I normally teach and there will be lots of uh, uh, hands on and the problem discussion or in the class and some assignments will be there which you need to solve and I will be talking again in the class if few people are not able to solve it. Okay, so so this is overall now coming back to Theo's question. One second. Theo asked me, can you give me an example of an enterprise automation use case for Python? See? I talk about the Ansible things in the uh, Theo is there. Yeah, Theo. So I was talking about the automation of. Uh, uh, I gave one example where we created the Ansible playbook. So that also we did in the Python. Okay. So we use Ansible uh, code. Uh, like we wrote the, you can say, Ansible playbook in the Python. That is one example. Second thing, I gave you the example of the configurations. Okay. If take a example, some router is there, in-house router is there, which you need to automate, which which uh, which you need to do on which you need to do some configuration. 
that can be done using Python. Now I'll talk about the specific thing, QA point of view and the dev point of view and SRE point of view. I'll try to give you an example of all those three. Uh, for the SRE point of view, I talk about it is having application for infrastructure as code using Python and Stable. In testing, there are two tools in the Python uh, called PyTest and Robo. Using those tools, we can do the automation testing of our system. So there also Python is useful. And when you talk about uh, uh, development side of you, I have seen lots of applications developed using the Python framework called Flask. When it is very low scale, like in-house, uh, in-house I mean to say, in-house uh, infrastructure uh, booking tool. What I mean to say, normally in the organization, you all have working experience. Infrastructure is not given to any engineer for dedicately, like they normally need to share. So all those things uh, can be done using the automation, like you can automate a system which will give you the status and everything that can be done using the Python. And uh, that the, all those things are uh, enterprise automation only, like anything uh, you write in the Python for doing any code uh, change in the application, everything is enterprise automation. If you are looking specific something on Python, which you need to understand, you let me know again. I, I'll try to explain that thing as well. But PyTest, Robo, Django, Flask, all those things are the real time example of the projects. And plus, um, like I gave him an example where you need to log in into a uh, Linux machine and uh, and do some configuration or install it just a package like sudo apt-get install something that can also be done in the Python using the Paramico framework. So it will become an enterprise automation. Uh, Theo, I hope it answered your question, but if you have any doubt, please free to ask. Cool, cool Theo. So that is overall. So that is overall the demo so if people can uh, tell me what they are looking for and have you gone through the content of the course any doubt related to the course you can unmute yourself and ask me the question Yeah, so I have a question. Can I, can I quickly ask? Yeah, sure, sure, Theo. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so some of us already have like you know basic Python and Terraform experience. So is this class in this class what are we getting? Are we are you training us to become like an expert in it so that we can do like whatever we want to do with Python and Terraform, or is this just like you know? So how's the eyes like? Are you shoring up our knowledge? Are you taking up upscaling our knowledge from that basic where we already are to like, you know, an expert level in these two in these tools that you're gonna be teaching us? Okay. So I'll repeat your question, Theo. So you you are trying to ask like uh, uh, Terraform and Python basic knowledge knowledge people have. And am I going to build the basic from the scratch or or you want uh, you are suggesting me to uh, you can say upscale from whatever that upscale from the existing that's, level that's that's not my question so my question is where, where are you taking us are you taking us to be to be an expert in python and terraform because i already have basic python and terraform knowledge like the stuff that you've been doing i can you know on the screen right now i can do that so are you gonna take us to like an expert level where we can actually do real world use cases on our own? Is that where you are taking us? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Because see, if I talk about only basic of Python that you can learn from anywhere, then I am not required. Okay. But I'm trying to say if I only want to talk about the Python basic list and other things and data type or in Terraform very basic, basic ISAC code, then you need not to have me in the class. You can learn it from the Google or somewhere. We will going to talk about the real life examples. And we are going to talk about a few of the projects where I have worked on, but those will be not under the recorded session. Those will be more of the demo kind of thing because those are I cannot give you an hour the recordings but after building a base and intermediate knowledge we will definitely going to talk about the real life example of the python i just give you the example of pytest and robo framework which is very useful in the devops and qa and all those activities we will talk about that framework as well little bit for one or two days so it will be uh, the course will be to clear the basic as soon as possible okay and uh, then going to the intermediate and advanced and then seeing some some real enterprise solutions as well okay thank you yeah yeah thank you to you any other question from anyone Please feel free, feel free yes, to ask. I have a, yeah, I have a question here. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, also in the syllabus, uh, it's talking about migration. So I see uh, cloud migration overview, database migration, uh, VM migration, and uh, data migration. Are you just mm -hmm. going to? uh leverage or just talk about it or we're gonna do a real migration like we're gonna migrate data from one point to another point okay so see we we will we will do whatever is written we will do it on practical uh data migration everyone understand in the theory okay but we will do hands-on and uh, for that thing whatever the setups and everything is required we will talk with the visual visual part and we will we, will we, we'll, we'll do it everything okay yeah hey Drew. are we going to see yeah. uses of terraform with in azure or is it going to be just aws see it does not make difference prashant like Azure, AWS, anything is fine, but see okay. how normally happen. I, I'll tell you, I have worked on Azure and AWS, both the blocks. Okay. And uh, when I interviewed for like, even for the GCP also, I just read about GCP for half an hour and I asked the interview some questions or like, I just take, uh, read the document and do the GCP configuration also. Like, I'll give you the example. I started my career with AWS sometime back around four, four to three years back. Then when I learned Azure, it was very easy for me. Only like, see in Azure, both are clouds. In Azure, it is VNet. In AWS, it is VPC. Okay. In Azure, we call it VM. In AWS, we call it EC2. Okay. In AWS, we call it bucket. In AWS, Azure, we call it blob storage. So see, very, very, it's just a little bit here and there implementation difference and the name difference. Otherwise, conceptually, everything is same. So now coming back to your Terraform question. If you understand how to write a Terraform template, it does not make any difference for you to write for AWS and Azure. Like what I'm trying to say, if you can write today, how to deploy one virtual machine windows virtual machine in cloud azure cloud using terraform template and if i ask you to do the same thing on the aws within few minutes you need to give some time to google but within few minutes you will be able to do it so conceptually both things are same got it thank you I guess Ramesh, you were asking some question. You unmuted yourself.
Hello. Ramesh, if you are talking, we are not able to hear you. Hello. So if no more question, we can close. And if you have any question, you can talk to your like coordinator who is talking to you and they can forward you the uh, forward me the questions of you. OK, I'll try to give the answer. Uh, one more question. Do we have Please. any project about it, about the cloud automation? Will you be giving a project, a real time scenario? See, Igor, I'll tell you one thing now now the question asked by the prashant like terraform uh, doing some kind of configuration in the azure or aws using terraform that is cloud automation so i will give you the basic example which is normally like to create how to create a vpc a acl and all those components i mean to say the resources of the cloud okay then when it coming to the real real example if you want to see a real enterprise solution thing I can give you the example of uh, my project, but that will be not under the recorded thing. That will be just a demo. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it's already 20 minutes past. Like we started 10 minutes. Uh, can you hear me? This is Ramesh. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ramesh, yeah. No I have a simple question actually. So, what level of knowledge is required for uh, on AWS and Azure to to proceed on this uh, course. It's a basic question. So, see, like uh, work experience all, is required, to... or a knowledge is enough on both the clouds. Or uh, okay, cool, cool. I get it. So, I want to understand, Ramesh, what is actually your expectation from the course? What you actually want to learn from the course? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Linux admin. I'm working almost uh, more than ten years. I've been working on Linux infrastructure. So just want mm -hmm. to move. Uh, so I write uh, shell scripts and all that. And I've never been uh, like involved mm -hmm. in Python scripting and all. So I want to move to cloud actually. But uh, is a certification required? To uh, is it like AWS uh, certification required? Then uh, have to move to this cloud automation, or is it a right time to move cloud automation so that uh, see, I see. can understand and write both? Yeah, I get you. See, I'll tell you one thing. Cloud certification is required when you want to do the cloud administrator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you need not to have. Okay. So now I am working in the cloud for almost four years now, from 2018. Yeah. So almost five years now. Uh, but complete four year you consider. I have never done any certification, mm -hmm. and never, never, ever try to read according to the certification, because I am a as that guy. I, my roles are more into the automation. My role is more on to the testing and developing the software codes. Okay, so I need not to have. But if you are planning to move from Linux administration to AWS administration, then you need to have. Then you need to have the uh, certification to show your credit, show the credential of yours. Okay, but if you want to continue in the automation side, then the good cloud understanding and how to navigate through the cloud uh, requirement, that is more than enough for you. For you, the more important thing is Python and problem solving skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, to correct it, actually, I, I just want to move to infrastructure uh, engineer and administrator, actually, where I want to continue my Linux, and as well, I just want to write uh, um, uh, infrastructure as a code for, uh, to build the instant, instances in AWS or in Azure. So yeah, cloud mm -hmm. admin and the infrastructure admin is div both are different, I think. So uh, yeah, as you said, you're correct. Yeah, so infrastructure, so. Yeah, if you want to go with the infrastructure point of view, then I don't yeah. think you need to have the cloud certification. You can learn the cloud 
mm-hmm. uh, we will talk about the cloud based thing you need to do hands on and right. uh, that that will be more than enough but when you right. want to be the operative of your aws account for that purpose you need to have the certifications right right yeah got it yeah okay yeah. thanks too that is yeah. all yeah that is also ramesh in the case when you want to move out of might be you are working in organization a if within the same organization you are trying to get this role then even that time certification is not must but from organization a if you want to move to organization b and in that case without certification it is very difficult now it is because mm-hmm. too much big competition okay right right understood yeah yeah thank you otherwise i will i will suggest you to go through the cloud basic learn the terraform more and learn python more that will have better better skill for you for the infrastructure related and other things okay yeah yeah got it sure yeah thank cool. you cool. cool ramesh so i i i guess we can close the call now if anyone still having question the guy who has asked or guy who has not asked so please do do drop a message to your coordinator they will they will share the question to me and we can talk about it okay